Ranch of Rivershine is an early access horse game from Cozy Bee Games and is being developed by one person. It has a sort of Stardew Valley vibe to it, as many have pointed out, and it is, actually, a very good horse game. This is a rarity in of itself, especially if you've watched this channel, but it is what it is, and what it is is good. There is a lot to love, a lot to admire, especially from just one developer, and unfortunately, also a lot to discuss. Early access games lend themselves to this trap. It is easy to get a wrong impression on a game, especially if it's half finished. But the problem with Ranch of Rivershine runs a little deeper than just missing features. In short, the core gameplay, around which everything else is built, is repetitive and grindy, and although these two elements don't always equal a bad game, they can become boring if not handled well. Now, this review will try to cover every aspect of the game. Horses, gameplay, environments and immersion. However, seeing as the game is in early access, I will try to be as fair as possible. And please remember, I'm not trying to tell you not to play a game. I just like analyzing games and seeing where they go right and where they dive off the cliff. However, before we do that, I just want to say thank you to my wonderful coffee supporters for being more awesome than the doctor landing in my bedroom. Let's get into it. And we're going to start with the story. The story begins when you get a ranch in the area of Rivershine, and you have to help the locals save the town by training horses and taking part in competitions with the help of their mayor, Madeline. The more races you win, the more people will come to the town and the more businesses will open up. The premise is very cliché. However, at this point in time, we don't know the full story itself. I'll hold off on giving opinions on the story until it's been fully incorporated. Once you arrive, Madeline helps you get your first horse through an auction house. It's a fun experience I will expand on later, but suffice it to say for now, I love the auction house. So many horses to choose from and so little time and so little money. Once you've gotten that first darling horse, you then have to learn how to ride, and you do this by leading the horse to a paddock where River teaches you the basics of riding. It sounds very mundane, but this creates a natural flow and logical thought that makes it easy to stay immersed in the game. It would be logical that you need to learn how to ride before actually riding, something not a lot of horse games actually take the time to explore. If you're going to make a horse simulation, you need to consider all facets. And one of the biggest moments for any horse rider it's the very first time they learned how to ride. Kudos to Cozy Bee Games for adding this. After you learn how to ride, you are told to go to George. Die, chickens, die! And you get a starter pack for your ranch, some feed and a brush. Once at your ranch, you put your horse in its stall and instantly feel a sense of buyer's regret because you realize at that moment you bought a very expensive horse and it's possibly not even that good and you really wish you'd been more patient when selecting one. Oh god, I, 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 I instantly have buyer's regret. Can I return it? I have, in I have buyer's regret. <laughs> and head off to bed in your brand new home. The next morning, Madeline will contact you about taking part in competition. Thanks to a corrupted file, I lost all my video footage for the rest of this game time. So for the rest of this section, we're going to be looking at Drama Boy. I have no idea where I came up with that name, but it's drama, so it's Drama Boy. I need to go to bed. The races at this point are fun, challenging and engaging. Just enough of a challenge to make it difficult, but not so much as to make it impossible. At first, you're going to have very few races to choose from, but this changes as you unlock more and more areas. You will also be competing to charge up statues that will give you bonuses, but I'll discuss that in just a bit. As the story progresses, you're going to meet a string of different people. River will teach you how to ride and will sell you training courses. Jay will help you open up areas and build courses in those areas. He's a bit of a wacko, sticking out his tongue at you at random intervals. I don't know how to respond to that, so I choose to ignore it. George, your local store owner, has a limited variety of items you can choose from to buy for your horses, but I am sure he'll get some more stock in soon, and you can sell your manure here as well. Piles and piles of it. Aisha will help you set up a garden and grow some crops for your horses. And Liam is your local carpenter who can help you build some great new buildings for a hefty price. You are as expensive as f These characters also have small quests you can complete. Currently, it seems we only have George's, but more quests are more likely in the making. You should also make a point of chatting with them, as important information is often given by these characters when you do. The people in Rivershine are so, so friendly. It's all smiles and tongues here. But eventually, you will learn about statues. Madeline will contact you and tell you that one of the statues in Rivershine is starting to glow, right in the center of town. She tells you that by competing more, the statue will start to glow more, and that she's quite curious to see what's going to happen 
if the statue starts to glow perfectly. So the statues in Rivershine are all of past champion horses. If you race in an area 10 times, the statue will glow and you are given a slight boost in one of these five stat bars, depending on where the statue is situated. Here is a very cool chart someone made up that'll give you an idea of how these statues distribute points. Now, this is the most interesting part of the story, but unfortunately, it does exacerbate an underlining issue. Because every bit of progress, new horses, new area, new obstacle course is hidden behind money, and your main source of income at the start is taking part in competitions, you're going to find yourself repeating races at nauseam those first few hours of play in order to progress both in story and to get the buildings you want. Couple this with the need to race 10 times to get those statues to glow, and it becomes an almost painful grind. This was my near quit moment. Now, quit moments are points when players simply give up on a game and do not come back. In an article from GameAnalytics.com, they discuss some reasons for why people will quit a game. And one of these reasons was burnout of repetitive tasks. If you require a player to do the exact same activity that they started playing the game with over and over again for each play session, they will eventually get bored of it." End quote. This is exactly what happened to me. No matter how fun the races are, and they are pretty fun, and no matter how slick the gameplay is, and it is pretty slick, I found myself sighing at each boot up because I knew I was in for the same repetitive races over and over again. And this extends into the training as well, which is far more egregious than the races. I will round off the story by saying that although we don't know a lot about it, the statues do give it some intrigue and I'm quite curious to see in what direction the story will be taking once it is fully implemented. Because really, the environments do ask for a wonderful story, or at least an interesting story. Rivershine is the epitome of cozy, cute and homely. The trees are chunky, the characters are rounded, the rocks are smooth and pretty, the water is sparkling, the colors are warm and homely, and the sound effects are kodig, as we say in Afrikaans. It all works together to give us that hot cocoa afternoon feel. I love going into the world, and I love just snuggling down into it and enjoying the aesthetic and feel. The music hits all the right notes, no pun intended. It has this great mixture of Stardew Valley meets Ghibli Studio that makes me think of magical places where the sun always shines. It's really a stunning soundtrack and fits the seasons and areas so well. I particularly love the fact that we have specific soundtracks for morning and night. And yes, there is a day and night cycle. And the stars are gorgeous at night. The day begins at 6am and ends at 2am. Now the world changes with the seasons as well, and all the maps also change accordingly. I will say the change between summer and spring is almost too subtle. I know in real life the change isn't much, but some more flowers or perhaps a shade or two lighter to differentiate between the two seasons would help make the seasons feel more unique and make the soundtrack pop a bit more against the backdrop. However, this is absolutely a subjective point. <laughs> Another point to mention is winter. It's an absolutely gorgeous time of the year, but when riding into town, it feels like the town is somehow living in a pocket dimension of warmth. People don't even seem to realize it's winter. Most likely something that needs to still be fixed or updated, but I just thought it was kind of weird riding into town and watching everyone in short sleeves talking about regular stuff, as if the snow and freezing temperatures was a set decoration. Now, currently, there are five areas to explore. Your ranch, the town of Rivershine, Crystal Lake, Pine Forest, and Lupine Meadow, which is a completely deprived of angry wolf packs. I am disappointed. Each area is quite big, and although there isn't a lot to find for now, you can find resources, meet a few new people, and of course, find the statues. Each area also has a map indicating character positions and important landmarks. The map also has a reset to entrance button, which makes it easy to traverse the areas. Each area also has an arena where you can set up obstacles to race around in. This is actually quite nice and encourages you to ride around there and train your horses there as well. Now, the town itself has some people wandering around that you can greet, and they will give you some feedback on the town, giving you an almost natural idea of where you're currently at in the story. I don't know if these town folks will play a different or larger role later, but their presence makes the town feel alive and their comments pull me into the immersion a bit more strongly. What I also love is that the characters also walk around town. You can find them at home, at their stores, or even at each other's homes. But it only helps to make the town feel even more organic. Furthermore, if you're worried that you won't be able to find these characters, you can find their current position always on the map. Due to these NPCs and character movements, the town really does feel like a real live town or as real as a town can be in a game. Now, I promised myself when I started this review that I wouldn't compare Ranch of Rivershine to other games, but it is important to note how lively a town feels with NPCs in comparison to one with none. Now, NPCs are very important to make an area at least seem populated. 
If those NPCs are absent, you are going to sit with a ghost town. And I'm going to start asking, when did the apocalypse occur? Also, the chickens help. Die, chickens, die! Now, your farm is a marvelously cute place and quite big. You have a stable, a little ranch house, you can build a breeding barn, you can expand your stable, and there's a big arena and paddock where you can train your horses. You can also install an indoor arena. There's at least some building options here. Now, the best part is watching our horses in the field. I swear this is the best part of the game. It's just so calming when you wake up in the morning and walk down to the paddock and see the horses walking around and eating some grass. It's There's something very endearing and, well, cozy about it. Except when they end up on the other side of the fence. Now, I assumed this was a bug, but it does create a sense of realism. Except for the lack of 30 plus stitches and the vet bill. However, beyond the Rivershine town and your Rivershine ranch, the other areas are pretty empty. The most you'll find are some resources, meet one or two people, find some funny rabbits, and chase some sheep. I, I think I might have a problem. There isn't a whole lot going on though. They are big, wide, and beautiful, and so, so empty. You can at least ask Jay to build some cross-country jumps in the forest, meadow and lake. So when you're out exploring, you can still train your horses jumping while riding around the area and be not contained to the paddock in the area. Now this is a wonderful touch and makes the area a lot more fun and engaging to explore at least. I would suggest to any players to get these obstacle courses as soon as possible. However, in closing, the areas are very well done. There are vast expanses of fields, waterfalls, forests and hills to ride around in. There are surprisingly big and you're going to take some time to explore them in total. I do hope more is added though to give us an incentive to explore, even if it is just a collectible. Now let's get into the auction house. Unlike most horse games in which you can either create or choose a specific horse in Ranch of Rivershine, that was thrown out in favor of finding a horse in an auction house. I've spoken at length about how much I adore this aspect and I'm going to take a moment to expand on this a bit more because auction houses are actually a lot of fun and I'm pissed off that no one has told me about this until now. Except for the very first auction in which you have unlimited horses. Each auction you take part in will have between 10 to 12 horses, but you can purchase a wider selection from Madeline. You can get wild, common, rare and legendary horses. Now these are all unlocked through story progression, which is mostly hidden behind grinding races. Fun fun. Each rank unlocks better stats and rare coat colors, and the price of the horses are determined by both their overall stat total and the coat color. But there is a bit of an issue here. The only colors I want are solids. I want blacks and bays and dapples and whites. And chestnuts too. And because the rare horses keep pumping out rare coat colors, I find myself drowned in the same old, same old paint spots and Oreos or whatever they're called. And then end up looking in the comment section for horses that fit my colors I'm looking for, but then I get terrible stats. The auction house really needs to be tweaked, especially this aspect. Rather make the rare coat colors, you know, rare. But still, the auction house is amazing. Searching until you find that little dream horse amongst the nags and then fighting for it and winning it is certainly a fun experience and a welcome addition to a horse game. You can also take horses you've trained or bred back to the auction house to sell them. The better they are trained or the more competitions they've won, the more they will be worth. And watching that meter run up during the auction is extremely satisfying and feels like your hard work has paid off. But it brings out the absolute worst in me. Give me all your money. This is one aspect I feel is kind of innovative in a way. I can't think of another horse game that is not racing where you can auction horses and buy horses at auction. It's a welcome addition and one I hope is picked up by other horse games and maybe even expanded on by those horse games. I hope they watch this video. A couple of other things to note for the auction house are bidding on the second bid seems to always close the bid for you. So if you really want the horse, just bid on the second option and you're good to go. I have not had a single person bid against me in the entire 20 hours of playing. This is most likely a bug, but I'm just telling myself I'm that intimidating. Another point to keep in mind, the auction house will always randomize even if you start the same day again. So if you see a horse you like and you don't have enough money, that horse is gone. You have no control beyond that. So don't go into the auction house if you don't have enough money. Which actually brings up another issue that I will shove in here. You can only save when you go to bed. And this is something I absolutely hate for multiple reasons. For one, it means that when I start playing, I am locked in until I have finished that day. Forced game time. I love it so much. And if I have to quit for one reason or another, even if it is 6 p.m. in the evening in game and I've already progressed in story and breeding, I am plumb out of luck and I have to start the day again 
and I will lose that progress training and breeding. For another, I live in South Africa and we have power outages like you can't imagine. Load shedding is a thing, look it up, but in short, I have a UPS that keeps my PC running for 5-10 to 10 minutes to give me a moment to shut it down before the power goes. Great way to save your games and your sanity. However, Rancho Rivershine is currently not very well optimized and thus pulls so much power from my PC that the second the power trips, my UPS just gives up. It just dies. As a result, I've lost not once, not twice, but three separate times. I've lost good horses, progress in story and training hours. Because we can only save when we go to sleep. What great game design. But to get back to the earlier point, I do love the auction house. It has some points that still needs tweaking. But overall, great addition and I hope it gets picked up by other games. Again, I hope they watch this video. Onto the horses proper, otherwise my viewers are just going to skip to them. You guys already did that, didn't you? The entire point of Rancho Rivershine is to train horses and take part in competitions. You can also breed horses, sell horses and grow some crops, but the main feature is train and compete. I know everyone goes on and on about realism, but oh my god, the horse models are freaking adorable. Big eyes and rounded little bodies and just adorable little sound effects is just so very sweet. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's cute though, it's cute. There's also a wide variety of coat, tail, mane and patterning options to choose from. So although you only have one horse model, you will more than likely find something you like. I personally never have an issue with one horse model, as it means more time is spent on gameplay, not aesthetic. Over 400 horses and we still have more bugs than we can count. The animations for the horses are there. It exists. The trot feels off, the canter feels too stiff, and the gallop is adequate. The only animation I find at least somewhat pretty is the walk. Again, a lot of people place great stock in the animation for a horse, but once again, animations don't really bug me as much as what really matters is the gameplay. Again. Now, when standing near a horse, you can lead it, mount it, or get more information. When leading the horse, they will canter behind you, and it is very responsive. You can also instantly mount the horse even if it's in the stable or paddock, which certainly make everything go faster. And you can call your horse if he's too far away, depending on the bond level, which will determine on whether he gives a damn about your whistle. Why must you hurt me so? I'm gonna call you Glue. When requesting more information, you are met with a screen that shows its stats and condition. Here you also feed the horse a treat. All of this is very seamless. I have very little issue with the menus and interface. It's all clear and interactive and quite well done. But there are one or two hiccups with the interface. I often struggle to get the lead option active on the horse. I always want to stand in front of the horse to trigger it, but it only triggers on the side of the horse, which is a bit annoying for my brain, which wants to stand in front when I start to lead a horse. The other point is that the teleport or return to end entrance button on the map sometimes grays out and I still have not figured out why this happens, but apart from these two problems, the menus and interfaces are well done. You will notice that these are currently grayed out, but this is because I'm not standing in an area where I can actually groom and feed the horse. Okay, let's just fix that for a moment. Okay, there we go. Yep, follow me, boy. We're just gonna go in there. And now we can talk about our favorite part of horse games, taking care of horses. Can you sense the sarcasm there? Because I meant it. In all seriousness, Rancho Rivershine has somehow figured out how to make the caring system decent and not overstay its welcome in the first hour. When your horse is in the stable, you will be met with this screen again. But here you can clean the stable, add some straw, brush the horse and then of course feed them. These are bog standard in all horse games, but it takes a fraction of the time, as it does in most other horse games. There are no mini-games, no arbitrary puzzles, or long time spent pulling out pebbles from horseshoes. I don't know why so many developers want to turn this section into outright chores. But Cozy Bee Games avoided that and found a balance that is both relaxing and certainly not exhausting. Another innovation for horse games, if you can believe it. Now to take care of your horse, you actually have two options. Either put the horse in the stable, where it will retain its energy, but become dirty and hungry so it needs more care. Or leave it in the field, where it will be satiated, but will lose 25% energy and you won't have to take care of it as much. Just note, if the horse is in the field, you cannot clean its stall, and this will affect the care bar. Which is kind of annoying, but most likely something that still just needs to be ironed out. The best option I've found, and to save yourself a lot of work, just drop them all in the field and then give them some treats when you want to ride. Treats are little energy poppers. A carrot will give you 10% and an apple will give you 25. There are more treats in the making, which can give you a full 100% energy boost, like cocaine. Now, just, just cover the condition bars real quick. Health, energy, satiety, care and trust. 
Energy is simple enough. This shows how much energy your horse has. The higher its endurance, the longer the energy bar will take to be depleted. Duh. Satiety is if the horse is fed and currently affects how quickly the energy bar will drop. Care represents if the horse's stable is cleaned and if the horse has been brushed. This is where that cleaning the stable bug is kind of annoying as I can't take fully care of my horse unless he's in the stall and I don't want to keep switching up between the stall and the field just to clean a damn stable. Now health is reflective on how well you're taking care of the horse so neglecting to feed it and clean it will result in the health bar dropping and the horse not being able to compete or to be sold. Later on the horse will become sick when a vet finally is added. However I tested this and if you leave a horse to zero health you can then bring that health back up through some basic care. Animal control will be knocking at any damn moment. And finally, trust is simply how much the horse trusts you. If its trust is high enough, it will follow you around and will come when you call. Finally, you care. Brushing the horse in the face and neglecting its care will result in the trust dropping. And that's really it for caring. Simple, smooth, with just enough to keep you occupied and some options to make it easier on you. Now this unfortunately did not extend into the training, which is where the biggest and most mind-numbing grind I've ever encountered will take place. Let's get into it. In games like Harvestella and Stardew Valley, the goal of the game is to run a farm and defeat slimy monsters and possibly romance the local cutie. It is what one would call a mixed genre, farming and combat. But despite having combat, both of these games are pretty happy, comfy and sweet, evoking a sense of cozy and home. Because running a farm, planting crops and taking care of those crops is extremely relaxing, no matter the backdrop. Crops have one feature that make them a perfect addition to these cozy style games. They offer diversity in gameplay. Some crops will require longer times to grow, some grow fully and then keep giving crops for a long time after, some are one-off and each has a different price tag on them. What this means is that you are essentially planning and considering each seed you plant because the result will be a slight variation each time, giving you different amounts of money and different amounts of work. And this makes the gameplay slightly intriguing and keeps the brain occupied. In Rancho Rivershine, there is no combat and the horses are your crops and both of these create problems. Let's first talk about what exactly training encompasses. The training boils down to ride your horse. That's really it. In whatever gait you ride the horse, that will determine what you're training. So gallop will equal endurance, canter equals speed, turning equals flexibility, jumping equals jumping, and there is no drifting. Ranch of depression shine. The other stat your horse has is the potential stat, and this is a total that is divided into the other stats depending on what you're training. So galloping everywhere will mean that your potential points will be divided into the endurance stat and cantering everywhere will mean that your potential points will be divided into your speed stat. Capiche? All of this is extremely natural. It means that whenever you climb on a horse, you are instantly going to start training the second you turn or go higher than a trot. The problem is though, all you can really do is ride in a panic, jump some jumps and ride in a different area and then jump some more jumps. And the longer you ride, the more you train. And the horses are your crops, as I said before. And that is your main gameplay element. And this creates the problem of absolutely no diversity in this game. Because all the horses ride, move and train exactly the same except for the amount of time you spend training, you are not really making plans or considering anything. It boils down to get on the horse, ride for X amount of time and grab another one. Now imagine doing this with around 4 or 5 horses. And every time you climb on a horse, you're going to do exactly the same thing just in a different backdrop. You can say but oh wait wait wait, you don't have to train every day rattle. Which would be true if the horses didn't lose potential points. Your horse loses one potential point every day. If you ride it or don't ride it, it will lose potential. This places an enormous amount of pressure on the player to train all their horses in quick succession every day to ensure you get the most out of them. And the average you're going to be able to train is around 9 to 10 points per day. And you have anything from around 40 to 100 potential points you need to divide into those stats. But it gets a little worse. Every 25 points in any skill ups your horse in class in that skill. So anything under 25 is beginner, anything between 25 and 50 is intermediate, and 50 to 70 is advanced, and then anything above 75 is expert. This gives you an idea of where your horse needs to be to take part in the competitions. Now, there is a high level of freedom in training. Unlike a lot of horse games that lock you into a very specific area or mini game to train, Ranch of Rivershine forwent that outdated idea and allows you to ride wherever and still train the horse. It's a welcome addition and gives you an incentive to ride. 
But this freedom of training means you have very little control over what you're training, most likely why those outdated ideas were so popular. Let's say you have 5 points left over you want to put into speed to reach 50 points and jump and reach the next class. So you start cantering around to get those points into speed. However, every time you turn, you are also instantly putting training and flexibility. As a result, you might end up with 4 points in jump and a plus 1 in flexibility, putting you just shy of your goal of 50. It can be very frustrating, and this lack of control can create a bit of a problem with riding, forcing you to trot everywhere to prevent points from getting shared into the wrong stat, or in my case, turning around in circles like a maniac to get flexibility trained. Ranch of Silkelshine. It's not exactly intuitive and only compounds the grind further as instead of relaxing, I am now constantly looking at my potential to see where exactly it's getting distributed. But the strange thing is, everything really revolves around one key component, the energy bar. The energy bar determines exactly how long you're going to be training, and this becomes a problem especially in later levels. When you get a yearling, for example, your horse's energy will be very low, so training it goes so quick and you can train three yearlings in quick succession. However, with every class the horse goes up, the energy bar is harder to deplete and the length of time to train goes up. But you can't train more points. Even though you're riding longer on the horse, you still get the exact same points out of it. Because the higher the horse's level, the more time it takes to get another point. So even though you're spending more time with the horse, you're still training exactly the same amount of points. I unfortunately made the mistake of buying three legendary horses. I trade one horse for 14 minutes straight before its energy bar was low enough to be put back into the stable. And I'd only trained nine points in total. To top it off, the time I spent in game was around 9.30 to 4 in the afternoon. So that means it takes me at least 6 hours to train one horse fully. I realized at this point I would be doing the same thing over and over again and just longer intervals to essentially train 9 points a day per horse. That's when I quit the game. I'm not being dramatic, mean or petty, but yes, I quit the game at this point. I couldn't do it, I couldn't bring myself to try and train three or even two horses mindlessly for hours on end for no other reward than having a slightly faster horse. And at the same time, watch my potential wither away because I'm not training it fast enough. The time spent with these horses is too long for the small reward you gain. If I had not been doing a review for the game, I honestly would have clocked out a lot sooner. Now, to be fair, you can speed up training by visiting statues and getting those bonuses. Or you can ride your horse in specific areas that will boost specific stats, and you can give different grains to boot up the training speed for one stat per day as well. All of these help mitigate the grind, but the highest you're going to be able to train, even with these bonuses, is around 13 points. So this does not really alleviate the endless grind, because you're still doing exactly the same thing just a little bit faster. And in the morning, I lose another point of potential because all my horses are slowly giving up on life. Many viewers might feel that I am being unfair to this game because it is still an early access, but I have to be honest about my experience and this is a huge detriment to the game and really, it just needs an X factor. And going back to Stardew Valley and Harvestella, they each had an X factor in the form of combat. Rancho River Shine has no such X factor or element that breaks or alleviates the monotony. Combat, in whatever small capacity, does engage a different part of our brain and will always spice up any interaction as long as it's done well. With no such different interactions, the gameplay of River Shine quickly becomes stale and repetitive. To be clear, I'm not saying that Rancho River Shine should add combat, but rather it needs to get an X factor, a randomizer that spices up the gameplay. How this can be achieved is a difficult challenge to be sure. Horses in future will get sick, which could help a lot. Injuries could also be interesting, complications with pregnancy could be interesting. Anything that will make the experience just that bit more challenging and engaging. As for the grind, we need to be able to hire people to help us on the farm. Also, the amount of points you get per training, especially if you spend 6 hours in-game training, needs to reflect that effort. Otherwise, you're just going to have frustrated players. One way that might help with the training is to limit us to how much energy we can expend on training. So, you can only train until the bar is half, for example, but you still get exactly the same amount of points as before. It could speed up the process at least somewhat. Different training options would also help. Hiring someone was mentioned before, perhaps a walker, perhaps a swimming pool, or even send them away to get trained anything to alleviate the grind and let us make small decisions and consider details like we would if our horses were actual crops but with training out of the way let's get into the racing
Now, before I chat about the racing, I have to chat about movement. Movement for the horses are spot on, with some minor problems. I can easily turn, stop, speed up and slow down, a fact I greatly appreciate. As during races, I often need to speed up and slow down in quick succession, and the horse responds beautifully. There is one funny hiccup with turning. If you hold down left or right and try to turn the other way while still holding down that key briefly, the turn won't register and my horse will go forward. So be sure to lift your finger off the key before trying to turn it into another direction. It also takes a while for this horse to start backing up, and something I've noticed recently is that sometimes when I go over a jump, the horse will turn in a direction. I'm not sure what's going on, but this is something that's new that's happening recently. I don't know why. But these are details that just need to be ironed out. It has these small hiccups have not bugged me in the racing aspect of the game, where the movement is so important. I really have a lot of fun with the races as a result to this good movement and response. Racing is solely based on your endurance. Later races will demand good flexibility, but endurance is a very important factor. But an interesting fact is if you're cantering while jumping, the energy doesn't go down. The only time the energy goes down is when you are galloping. And when you're galloping and you're jumping, the energy continues to tumble. A good piece of advice is to slow down every time you approach a jump. Gallop as much as you can, but once you get close to a jump, slow down and let the canter fill up the energy bar again. Because again, as you're jumping, the jump doesn't affect the energy. A small tip, but it helped me immensely on those first few races. Also, keep an eye out for shortcuts. There are a bunch of them and you can kill a few pedestrians along the way. I really do like the racing. My only gripe, again, is that there isn't enough variety. And I get so tired of repeating these races over and over and over again. It becomes mind-numbing. Variety is lacking, especially at the start. And this does the in races injustice. Thankfully, though... As you unlock more areas and you go up in rank, more races are revealed and they are a fun challenge. Not too difficult, not too easy, just right. Although the winter races are impossible, where the f*** is that marker? Purdy foals. Sorry. Breeding is unlocked once you've built the breeding barn. You take two horses, slap them together, and they make eventually a baby. It depends on this percentage, which is linked to the trust they have in you. Once they have copulated, your mare will have a big old belly. You can ride her, but not compete. And you can't stand there and swoon over her fat little belly that only stretches down, not sideways. Otherwise, we'd look like we're riding potatoes. You wait seven days before the foal is dropped in the field. Then, due to a bug, you wait another day before the foal materializes. Where the foal goes, I have no idea, but it returns on day two after its birth. Then you can pet it, feed it carrots, and watch it frolic in the field. After another seven days, your foal grows up into a yearling. It will have 100% potential plus whatever it is in its stats. So now you can start training like a madman for 14 days. Once it's trained, you can then either keep it or sell it at auction. If you had the foresight to take part in some races, the horse will have even more value. And that's really it for breeding. Simple, quick, clean. It appears the coat colors are pretty spot on as well. But I'll leave that up to the experts as I really don't mind coat colors. I just want a solid color, good solid colors, lots of solid colors, please. And just to character creation, because I need to put this in somewhere. Much like the rest of the game, it's simple and quick. You can change hair, eye and skin color, edit the clothes and then head off into the world. You can also change your character at any time in the wardrobe. I don't know if this is a feature will stay, but it is there for now at least. My hair color did change halfway through playing though. Just a bag I picked up. Now movement for the character though is a little odd. She always faces forward and you move her with the mouse and press forward with the W. She can also strafe. Now this is not exactly bad, but it is a bit jarring as I prefer with mouse as my camera and the keys as my direction for adventure games. Not a game breaker, just something I noticed. Overall though, the character moves fine. In closing, Ranch of River Shine is a little horse game with a ton of potential, a great base and a lot to enjoy. There are some serious issues that do need to be addressed. Hopefully this will be done in future. But for now, I would encourage people to buy the game. As despite its flaws, there is one aspect that must be mentioned. The best way to describe Ranch of River Shine's gameplay is flowing. Even natural can be applied. This might sound strange, but really due to this extremely simplistic gameplay and gentle interface and logic in the world, 
everything feels like it's seamlessly connected. It's quite fascinating, from walking into the stable to feeding, grooming, mucking and saddling up. There are no menus or interfaces that ever make the flow stumble. I can step into the paddock, call my horse and mount up instantly. I can ride my horse into the paddock and it's instantly unsaddled. The training, although grindy and mundane, makes it feel more natural. Nothing hinders my progress. Nothing feels fiddly or difficult to do. It's all a perfect flow of thought and action that makes the game a lot of fun to boot up and play, if you ignore the grind. But this simplistic style encourages a natural sense of immersion and roleplay. I easily slipped into the role of horse rancher. The world keeps that sense of cozy and cute everywhere, keeping you further nestled in its warmth. And the game itself just flows so easily from one point to another. It's easy to become immersed and easier still to stay there. <laughs> I really do love the game, despite its flaws. I think it's a game that stands, even as it is now, as proof that horse games can be done well and they don't have to have big budgets and grand teams to make them something special.